are now live. Alright guys, now we wait. I'm doing all this while I have my driver's ed going in the background, bro. Alright guys. <laughs> Alright guys, uh, lesson one. Um, how to break down a door. As you can see by the how to break down a door. Alright, so what you do... <laughs> so what you do to break down a door, guys, is you kick the point where the lock is mounted. <laughs> alright, alright, survival, survival step two. That is, what the fuck? Alright. How, you can't even see that. How to land a plane. These instructions call small pa cover small passenger planes and commercial airliners. Alright, alright. How hard it, could this be? If the plane has one set of controls, push, pull, carry, or drag the pilot out of the seat. Okay. Step two. Take your place at the controls. Uh, step three. Put on the radio headset. Use the radio to call for help. <laughs> what are these instructions, bro? <laughs> um, there's a CB-like microphone on the instrument panel. To press the button and talk, scream Mayday. M1 postcards join. If you get no response, try again on the emergency channel. Tune the radio to 121.50. Um, that, that's kind of what... I'm gonna need this someday. Mad information. <laughs> so, Alright, there's um there's a there's an instrument panel cluster gauge thing. Um number five, get your bearings and identify and identify the instruments. Um yoke. This is the <laughs> this is a steering wheel. It should be in front of you. Altometer. Uh this indicates the plane's altitude or height. Um, heading, the direction of travel, airspeed, your speed. Bro, this is just like so, so intuitive. Throttle, uh, airspeed. All right. Number six, begin the descent. Pull back on the throttle to slow down. Reduce air power by a... <laughs> reduce power by about one quarter of cruising speed. As the plane slows, <laughs> the nose will drop. <laughs> I'm trying to educate people. For descent, the nose should be about four inches below the horizon or five to six finger widths. That's a lot of fingers. How am I supposed to measure six fingers if I only have five, bro? <laughs> no, Zach, this isn't about a door anymore, bro. This is survival tip two. This is how to land a plane. <laughs> I love Junior. He's so stupid. <laughs> Bat, I love that. Mad because Bat is the best clap back to anything ever. What's up, guys? Alright, oh, my phone's gonna fall. That scared me. Alright, I'm gonna read with the pities on, bro, for, so I can... These are my reading glasses. Alright. I don't know. Alright, um, number seven. I can't fucking see. Number seven. Extend the landing gear. Determine if the plane has fixed or, fixed or retractable landing gear. Fixed landing gear is always down so you don't need to do anything. If it's retractable, there will be another lever between the seats near the throttle with a handle that is shaped like a tire. For, water, for a water landing, leave the landing gear up. How are you supposed to land if you have the landing gear up, bro? That'd be embarrassing. Alright. Number eight, or step eight on landing on a plane. Gets in one video and thinks he's hot, as hot as Ryan Reynolds. You Are you are you saying Ryan Reynolds? I'm not even going to ask. Should I put a beanie on? I should put a beanie on. Um. <laughs> Alright. If you cannot find an airport, find a flat field on which to land. A mile long field is ideal. Oh yeah, I'll be in like, imagine you're just like ha having a panic attack, trying to land a Boeing, and you're like, oh, that field's exactly a mile wide, I'll land over there. Um, 
Do not bother looking for the perfect landing site. There's no such thing. Bumpy terrain will also do if your options are limited. So what, I should land in a mountain? Uh, not that bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> bro, kickball. I remember that, bro, like, uh, medium bouncy. Fast, no bounce, bro. I remember when people would be like, that's not what I asked for. and be like, shut up, bro. Um... <laughs> If landing in water, land close to a boat or near shore. The ocean is massive. How are you supposed to... Okay. Um, and keep the landing gear attracted. Never attempt to land a plane with fixed landing gear in water. Alright, so you have a, if you have a plane with fixed landing gear, you're fucked. Alright. Um, number nine. Line up the landing strip so that when the altimeter reads a thousand field... A thousand field... Line up the altimeter. Fuck. Line up the landing shear so that when the altimeter reads a thousand feet, the field is off the right wing tip. Wait, why would I want to do that? In an ideal situation, you should take a single pass over the field to look for obstructions. With plenty of fuel, you may want to do so. All right, so you're basically going for a joy ride at this point, because that's what you do when you're landing a plane in an emergency. Uh, number 10. When approaching the landing strip, reduce power by pulling back on the throttle. Alright, you guys you guys got that part? When when you're landing, re reduce power. What's up, Tanner? Bro, I'm just entering random keys on my keyboard. Where's my mouse? Okay. Alright. Number 11. The plane should be 100 feet off the ground when you're just above the landing strip, and the real rear wheels should touch first. The plane will aerodynamically stall, also called an airfoil or wing stall. Uh, number 12, um, pull all the way back on the throttle and make sure the nose of the plane does not tip too steeply. This may cause a mass, you know, okay. Basically it says if you go too fast, you're going to kill everyone on the plane. Number 13, using the pedals on the floor, steer and brake the plane. All right, time for some pro tips. A well-executed emergency landing in bad terrain could be less hazardous than an uncontrolled landing on an established field. Number two, if the plane is headed towards trees, steer in between them so the wings absorb the impact. All right, so don't crash into things. Uh, number three, when the plane comes to a stop, get out as soon as possible and get away. All right, I thought, I'd, I thought you would just want to stay in the plane. Number four, move away from the plane toward the direction of the tail and at least 15 feet beyond it. Number one, two, three, four, five. Most six pack flight instrument layouts are as follows from left to right, top row, airspeed, altitude, altimeter, second row, turn coordinator, heading, and vertical speed. Vertical, like up and down. All right, survival tip number three how to survive in flight emergency. <laughs> Extreme turbulence, not just normal turbulence. Secure all loose items, fasten your seatbelt, raise the tray table, protect your head, be alert for oxygen, and prepare for drops. Okay, simple enough. Um, how to prepare for a screaming child. What kind of survival tips are these? Move. <laughs> it just says move. This is, a, this is a good book. Alright. Number number four. What to do if there are snakes on your plane? Do not scream. Uh, number two. Wait, number one. A snake cannot hear in the traditional sense. Blah, 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 blah. Alright, number two. Lift up your feet. Snakes require warm objects to help regulate body temperature, so they will naturally move away from cooler places of the plane and try to attempt to wrap around your legs. Okay. Number three. Turn the reading light on. Okay. Number four. Lower the tray table. The tray table will give snakes a sturdy surface on which to climb. Number five. Limit your movement. Number six. Do not grab it by the tail. Um, a snake will immediately turn and bite the hand that grabs at its tail. You will not be able to grasp the tail and toss the snake into another row before it bites you. Number seven. 
allow the snake to crawl over you or to climb up you. I don't think snakes climb. Oh, Annalise, do you not see the title? I'm reading worst case scenario survival stuff. Number eight, support the snake. Annalise, Brandon says I can beat you in tennis. Or he says he can beat you in tennis. How to capture snakes. Um, put it in an overhead bin. <laughs> Have it be someone else's problem when you land. <laughs> imagine imagine you put it in your bin, bro, and you just completely like zone out and you wake up and you're like, I had this whack ass dream. You open it like a boa constrictor like tackles you. Alright. Alright, hack number six. How to break into a car. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Use a hanger. Alright. Step one. Take a wire hanger and bend it into a long J. Step two. Square off the bottom of the J so the square is one and a half inch to two inches wide. Number three. Slide the hanger into the door between the window and the weather stripping. Open the door by feel and trial and error. Feel for the end of the bottom rod, and when you have it, pull up to open the lock. Here's a diagram. I think it's backwards, because it's my backwards camera. So that was kind of useless to everyone. All right, with, with a lockout tool. Slide the tool gently between the window and the weather stripping. Do not jerk the tool trying to find the lock rod. <laughs> Move the tool back and forth until it grabs a lock rod, then gently move it back and forth until the lock flips over. Um, Nicole, who would win in 10? Oh, yes, Mustang. How to pick a door lock. This one's for Brandon. Um, let's see. Step one. While the, <laughs> while the bobby pin or pick lock is in the lock... <laughs> Exert constant and light turning pressure within the wrench. Move the bobby pin to manipulate the wafers slash sliders as you exert turning pressure within the tension wrench until you feel the lock turn smoothly. How to perform a f perform? <laughs> How to perform a fast 180 degree turn with your car from reverse. Put the car in reverse and put your left hand at the six o'clock six o'clock position on the wheel. Select the spot straight ahead. Jam on the gas. Hold on it for three seconds. Drop the transmission into neutral and whip the wheel as quickly around as possible to the nine o'clock position. Three quarters of a turn. Um, when the car has completed the turn, drop the car into drive, step on the gas, and drive off. All right. How to successfully ram a car without taking your own life. All right. Step one. Disable your airbag. I feel like you might need that. <laughs> Step two, fasten your seatbelt. Step three, accelerate to at least 25 miles an hour. Uh, Step four, increase speed just before impact. If possible, increase your speed to greater than 45 miles an hour. What's up, Ethan? I'm teaching people how to ram a car. Yeah. Yeah, so you want to increase 20 miles an hour at the last second and have a disabled airbag. Step five, ram. Okay. This is the most important part, guys. Uh, don't have my AirPods in, so I don't... <laughs> All right, step five. Ram the front passenger side of your car into the obstacle car at its real rear wheel at a 90-degree angle. The car should be perpendicular or as close as possible when you hit. Number six. If unable to hit the rear, go for the front right corner. Avoid hitting the car squarely on the side. This will not move it out of your way. Number seven. Do not stop moving. The car should spin out of your way. Pro tips. Don't die, bro. <laughs> uh, newer cars may have more safety features that may turn off the engine and deploy multiple airbags. Make sure to disable all airbags. All right, you guys heard it here first. Disable all your airbags. <laughs> How to survive a car crash. Brake early and keep braking. The impact of sudden deceleration causes most car injuries and fatalities. The more you can reduce your speed, <laughs> the better your chances of survival. Number two. Oh, oh, you okay. All right, so the key to surviving a car crash is to sit in the back seat. So if you're driving, you're fucked. The first, 
<laughs> All right. Yeah. So, as Zach just said, right before you're going to crash, jump in the back and buckle up. The farther you are from the inflating airbag, the greater its effectiveness in slowing you down. So, airbags kill you. Disable your airbags, guys. Number three. Number three. Keep your seatbelt fastened. Uh, seatbelt wearing webbing stretches while holding you in the seat. <laughs> keep legs and hands away from airbags. For drivers, keep thumbs and forearms away from the steering wheel airbag. For passengers, keep arms and especially legs off the dash. Alright, so don't be comfortable in a car. Swerve, but only at low speeds. Number seven. Only steer right. Steering left will kill you. If it's a head-on <laughs> it's a head-on collision, brake and steer to the right. Steering to the left may put you into oncoming traffic and kill you sooner. Number eight, aim for grass. If there's anything beyond grass, you are most likely fucked. I love this book. Pro tips. Avoid driving between midnight and 2 a.m. on Friday and Saturday nights when other drivers, like Stone, may be impaired. Avoid driving in the left lane on the interstate, especially at night. Drivers traveling in the wrong direction will usually usually be in this lane. Why would they do that, though? That's illegal. How to escape from a sinking car. Open your window as soon as you hit the water. This is your best chance of escape because opening the door will be very difficult. Number two, break the glass. Power windows may work at first until the car's wind electronics get wet. All right, guys. Step, th all right, you guys want to hear this? Step three in how to escape a sinking car is get out. Get out as soon as possible while the caller... I'm not even kidding. You can't even see it because it's backwards. But it's step three. Well, it, it makes a lot of sense. If you're going to die, don't. Um, if trapped inside, wait until the car is filled with water and you have no breathing oxygen. Remain calm and do not panic. Although your lungs may be slowly filling with water, there is still a chance of survival. <laughs> when the how to avoid breaking through the ice. Cars and, light tr cars and light trucks need at least 8 inches of clear solid ice on which to drive safely. Avoid driving on ice in early or late in the season. You, you just measure it while you're driving, obviously. Uh, new ice is generally thicker than old ice. Um, ice near the shore is weaker. River ice is generally weaker than lake ice. And river mouths are dangerous. Number... I lost count. How to survive a train derailment. Number one, listen for train horns. And if forward, a forward collision is imminent, you may hear a repeated series of short whistles as the operator warns of the train's approach. You will have just seconds to react. Number two, don't jump. You are more likely to be injured by an obstacle near the track bed than a collision. Uh, number three, move to a seat in a passenger's car. Quickly get out of the front of the train and run towards the back as quickly as possible. If you're laying down, stay there. Oh, let me in. Oh, Lucas wants to be in the live. Okay, I'll let you in the live, Lucas. Only because he said please. Number five, brace for impact. Number six, prepare for the coordination effect. Junior Watanabe Yama, woo! 4-5 Summit! 4-5 Summit! Hi, Luke. Hi, Cole. Who are all the gay people? Hello? 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 Hi. What are you reading? Uh, How to Not Die. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Hi, Cole. Cole and I were just having gay sex. Good thing there's nobody in this line. There's only three people. Why don't you come, Nick? Because I have a life. That doesn't even make sense. You stayed inside, so you have a life? Brandon didn't go, so I didn't go. Anyway, we're, we're probably going to go to school. That's, that's cool. Okay. I just be sucking. Okay, see ya. Really? No.
All right. Wait until the train stops moving. Check for smoke. Listen for instructions and evacuate if necessary. All right. Tip number... I don't know which one this is. This is not definitely not 23. Is Zach still here? Zachary Goss. Oh. Uh, all right. I'm going to wait for this one to... Oh, you are, Brandon? What's up, Beja? What's up? Brandon says he's going to join the live. I don't know where he went. I have to go in like two seconds, so... Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, how to survive being burned alive. This is an important one. Conserve your air supply. If you are buried, if you are buried in a typical cough, oh, buried, not burned. <laughs> good thing I'm. Good thing I can read. All right, how to survive being buried alive, not not burned alive. I guess I guess you wouldn't really survive that. That, that doesn't make much sense if I'm being honest. Anyways, um, how to survive being buried alive? Conserve your air supply. Uh, you will have enough air to survive for an hour or two at most. Uh, number two, press up on the coffin lid with your hands. An inexpensive pine box or recycled paperboard coffin will have some give to it, so it will be uh, relatively easy to break through. If you feel flex in the coffin lid, continue to step three. All right, let's go to step three. Remove your shirt. Oh, fruity. Cross your arms over your chest and uncross your arms so that your elbows are bent and your hands are at your shoulders. Pull your shirt up and off your head from the shoulders. Do a partial sit-up as much as you can in the space available. Then pull your shirt over your head. Tie the bottom of a shirt. Tie the bottom of the shirt in a knot. The shirt should only have one large opening at the neck, as does a bag. Um, place your head through the neck hole. Uh, the knot should be in the top of your head. The shirt will prevent you from suffocating on loose earth, so choking on dirt. Step six, break through the coffin. Using your feet, bro, using your feet, begin kicking the coffin lid. A cheap coffin may have already split from the weight of the earth above, making your job easier. Break apart the lid with your hands and feet and let the dirt rush in. Uh, rush in. Use your hands to push the dirt towards your feet. Sit up and then stand. This is all too easy. A recently interviewed, or a recently in, in what the fuck? Injured coffin will be covered with loose earth that is relatively easy to dig through. Why are you wearing glasses inside? Um, they're on my forehead. They're not on my face. They're not on my eyes. Escaping from a coffin uh, during a rainstorm will be difficult. The compact weight of the wet earth will make digging almost impossible. Bro, Brandon, I thought it said how to survive being burned alive, but it said how to survive being buried alive. <laughs> the higher the clay content of the soil, the more difficult your escape will be. All right, so pro tip, don't get buried where there's a lot of soil. Chapter two. All right, chapter two will be saved for tomorrow. I'll do a chapter a day. <laughs> All right, later.